Hi everybody. I've got one of my high voltage probes filled with oil for a high voltage insulation, but I figured before I fill up the other one, um, I would run a few tests on it just to see what effects the oil has on its uh, electrical response. So I'm just going to basically do the same thing I did in uh, my previous video where I did some uh, capacitor compensation tests and you can click on it right here to watch the video. So basically this high voltage oscilloscope probe is just a glorified voltage divider. Here's basically the schematic. I've got a can right here. That's the outer box. The, the, the jar is going to go inside the, the metal can. Um, so it's, so it's uh, shielded, grounded on the outside. And then I've got the glass jar here filled with oil. And that oil introduces um, some extra capacitance between nodes inside the jar. And of course, with the metal can on the outside, there's extra capacitance to ground. Plus, the output is a short length of coax cable, so that's a distributed capacitance to ground. And um, this is basically the top leg of the Volch divider, and the bottom leg is right here, just with um, some extra capacitance here for the compensation that I'll be, I'll be varying that to try to tune it properly. And for the first test, I'll be using my Tektronix 106 square wave generator. It generates um, a square wave from 0 to 120 volts um, if, it's, if it's going into a high impedance load. And this is definitely high impedance. It's many megohms. But um, got a 1 microfarad capacitor right here. And there's a high voltage probe not immersed in oil yet. And the output goes over here to what will eventually become the compensation box. And I have attached to that the resistor and the fixed capacitor and then the variable capacitor right there. And then the output of that goes to the Tektronix P5200 differential probe. And that goes to the scope. All right, I got it on 10 hertz right now. And... Well, let me flip it to 100 hertz, and we can see what's going on here. The, uh, the yellow one, that's this one, that's the input coming directly from the function from the square wave generator. And then the blue one is the output coming from the, uh, the differential probe. And you may be able to see it. There is a between the input and the output voltage scales we've got 20 volts to 20 millivolts per division so 1 1000th ratio which is very good and that's that's just by the resistors that's basically the DC value um, get that 1 1000th but then AC wise if I vary the capacitor here you can see the effects you got undercompensated compensated and then I increase the capacitance more we have overcompensated so I'm just gonna put it so that the output is almost identical to the input all right now I'm gonna increase the frequency to a hundred kilohertz because that's what I'll be using on my Tesla coil and you can see we still have very good fidelity here between the input and the output let me go one more to a megahertz here. And we got this little bit of high frequency oscillation on the output, but that's no big deal. Overall, the shape of the, the output is exactly the shape of the input. All right, now I'm going to turn off the function generator and hook up a little LCR meter here to measure the capacitance, compensation capacitance total with everything all hooked up. And last time in the previous video, I was getting uh, 318 picofarads. This one is 337. That's not too far off. It may be because of the capacitance introduced by the coax cable here. That's uh, that by itself introduces 25 picofarads. 
Now let me swap out the old probe, or the, uh, the unfilled probe for the, the one that's filled with oil. Gonna put it in the metal can too. And hook up the ground connection. Up the high voltage input and the output. And everything else, the capacitor is where it was before, but we can see right away there's a slight difference here. So let me tune the cap, decrease the capacitance a little bit so we get both waveforms to the same level. Let me just go through the frequencies here. And everything looks good across the whole spectrum. Ten hertz, one kilohertz we got. It's very nice. one megahertz still pretty much the same all I had to do was uh, to change the compensation capacitance so let me check that again So it's a little less. We got 317, 318 picofarad, and that's pretty good. I'm very pleased with my design. Um, I was trying to minimize all these parasitic capacitances, so that's why I used a, a large metal can uh, rather than wrapping the outside of the jar in aluminum foil. I could decrease the capacitance by keeping the ground shield further away from the glass jar, and um, these capacitances here introduced by the oil that's really no big deal because they're basically in parallel with the whole resistor network and the effect of these would be no different than the effect of all these other capacitors in series with each other so I've basically achieved my goal of creating a design where there's very little difference between um, when the resistor network is immersed in oil and shielded and when it's not. So one last thing to do is to measure the capacitance, measure my compensation capacitance that I should eventually put in the metal box here. So I got 315 but that's with everything hooked up to it. Let me disconnect Disconnect the probe from the uh, function generator and also disconnect this. Or I could just disconnect these right here. There we go. And 240 picofarad is what I should be putting in that box along with the uh, 20 megohm resistor. So that's it. Thanks for watching.